Right now, highways are closing every, every direction, so there is no option. We bought a camper! Hi everyone! Hello! In this episode, we are traveling across Canada, well, Ontario to BC and back, to pick up our new truck and camper. Yeah, we shopped for a truck camper for a while, didn't find much in Ontario, and then finally just said, let's just go to BC because we saw one there. Yeah, so a little backstory on this camper is um, we had gone out to BC to visit my family around Christmas time, and right across the street from my sister's house sat this truck and Bigfoot truck camper. And so we went over and uh, chatted with her neighbor and turned out it, it was for sale. But because we were part way through our trip, there was no way for us to be able to um, purchase it and bring it home. So when we got home from our winter trip, we uh, started looking around Ontario for this particular type of camper. We wanted a Bigfoot truck camper, preferably, as it is a, um, a Four Seasons camper. And they're really hard to get here. Yeah, even, even in the winter when we were traveling, I was looking online to yeah. see what was available in Ontario. And the thing is, where we live, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. And even if there is something for sale in Ontario, it could be 12, 14 hour drive from us. Yeah. So really, there's nothing easy to get. So if we got to drive 12 or 14 hours, well, I was just fly 8,000 kilometers, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we did look around. There was a few that came up for sale, but they went super quick. Um, so it didn't really give us the chance to even get there to check it out. Um, so we said, you know what, we've seen this one that was back in Kamloops. Um, so I reached out to my sister. She said it was still for sale. So we reached out to Harry, which is the, the owner of it, and we said, we'll take it. Yeah. We're on our way. We made a deal. Yeah. It was good. He's like, yeah, whenever you want to come. And so we looked at flights, found yeah. a timeline that was reasonably priced flights or pretty cheap flights. Yep. Yeah. And uh, booked our flights and then started to make a plan. Yeah. So the trip in total was approximately 8,000 kilometers. So... We had to drive two and a half hours to Sault Ste. Marie, which is our closest airport. Um, get on a flight from there, fly to Toronto. The opposite direction. The opposite direction from where we're going. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in Toronto, we flew from Toronto to Vancouver. Right past where we were going. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, yeah. And then <laughs> got on another flight from Vancouver to Kamloops. Then picked up the truck camper and drove all the way back home. Yep, so, through the rest of British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan Manitoba, Manitoba, half of Ontario. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So prior to going, um, we had to get ready for the camper because we knew that we were going to camp in it on the way home. Um, and there was nothing in it. So we had to think about bedding and pillows. Yeah, and we needed enough basics to, um, to be able to stay in it. All the way across through cold weather or cooler weather. Cooler weather, because yeah. it, it was April. It was April. It was spring yeah. weather, yeah. You never know what you're going to get. Exactly. So, and we didn't really want to go and buy a bunch of stuff, so we packed it. So a friend of mine gave us some... Um, vacuum bags. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They're these great big, like kind of like a Ziploc bag. And you hook your vacuum up to it and it sucks all the air out and it squishes it down. Um, so that's what we did. I vacuum packed our pillows and our blankets and some clothes and whatnot. And we packed her up and hit the road. Yeah. And the weather leading up to this, it was beginning of April. I think we flew out. April 3rd. Yeah. Or, well, I think we flew out April 4th, but we left here April 3rd. Yeah, and the weather leading up to that, it, you know, it was a pretty mild winter and we had spring weather and most of the snow had melted. And then just before we had to go, snowstorm, yeah. big snowstorm. That's usually how it goes. So we fly out of Sault Ste. Marie at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And uh, we were debating whether we'd drive down this afternoon, catch a hotel room and get up early to go to the airport or uh, 
just uh, leave really early in the morning. We had about a three hour drive to get to the airport and uh, we were kind of deciding we were just gonna leave really early and drive, get there for our flight, get there around four or 5 a.m. So leave around, uh, I don't know, 1 a.m. or something, 2 a.m. But uh, we woke up this morning and it's a snowstorm. So uh, the highways are closed in all directions. So we got two options to get there. It's uh, about a three hour drive along Lake Superior, which has questionable weather, or about a six hour drive if we take uh, stay away from Lake Superior. Um, hopefully we don't have to do that option, but uh, right now highways are closed in every, dir every direction, so there is no option. So here's hoping the snow lets up and uh, we can get there to catch our flight. Should be an interesting drive, we'll see. Hey! Hey, the highways are open! Hey. We're on our way! So we're gonna go while we can because I've been stuck like that before where the highways open and you wait a little bit and then they close again. Yeah, so it's still snowing like crazy here, I'll show you. Typical so. April, what is it, third? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, April 3rd. So, th hopefully this doesn't last long. It's supposed to turn to rain. So, fingers crossed it turns to rain and... Yeah, I think it's raining an hour south of here or so. So, we'll get into, you know, switch from snow to rain along the way, I think. Yeah, so fingers crossed, all goes well. And it was a pretty good snowstorm for the first pet. It was, and then we hit the halfway mark and all of a sudden, it just stopped and you could you could see because it had been so warm that everywhere the snow had melted right and you could see where this storm had come through and the system had turned or stopped or whatever because it was like somebody just drew like this magic little wall and you went from having feet of snow on the side of the road and in the trees and whatnot to absolutely nothing not a flake anywhere it was the weirdest thing it just yeah, it was, it was a little odd. We did the whole motel for a couple hours, stupid early, get up in the morning, catch our flight, and um, we actually packed a bag because we had to bring all that um, all that camper stuff. Yep. We, so we actually had to check a bag, which we never check bags. We always just do mm -hmm. carry on. We don't take the risk um, of, you know, lost baggage and so on. We just kind of carry on what we need and that's how we travel normally. Mm -hmm. But we checked like a 50 pound bag. <laughs> And um, there was a little bit of delays with our flights, but all our connectors yeah. worked out. We didn't get delayed enough that it actually interfered with the next flight. We arrived in Kamloops when we were supposed to, and our bag and our arrived bag too. Did, which was crazy. Yeah, which, you yeah. know, you don't expect that with Air Canada usually. Yeah, no. I usually didn't. either your, your flights get delayed to the point of not connecting or your baggage doesn't show or something, but it was meant to be because everything showed. Yeah, and we really had our doubts because was it Toronto, I think it was, they actually had to get us a different plane. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, mm, so. Yeah, our plane broke down or something. something and we and had they, to get a completely different plane. And, and they were, were like pretty late getting to the gate, like 45 minutes maybe or something. Oh yeah, something like that. And Which, yeah. you know, you could then miss your connector in Vancouver and, uh, but. Uh, but we thought, we thought, oh no, if we're getting a completely different plane, our, our baggage is just not gonna show up when we do. <laughs> but it did, so that was great. So we arrived in Kamloops on time and um, then we went across the street and met up with the owner of the truck and camper and made the deal. Yeah, so Harry walked um, Gordon and I through everything. Um, because we weren't prepared to purchase the truck, we didn't know anything about the truck. We had only looked at the camper when we were there in December. So he was great. He walked us through absolutely everything from top to bottom one into the other and uh, made sure that we were happy with uh yeah and the truck purchase. was actually surprisingly yeah. very nice it was much better than i thought it was so that was good We bought a camper! 
Big fat 2500. Yeah. If you're in a little town and you want to stay in there private and you want to go to the bathroom, you can climb up these ladders, drag them in, close the door, and nobody will think it's you just parked. Oh, uh, I see. So, and then so that's that, water drains. It is the drain. It's open. Right? These, oh, yeah. that, that tank's open. And the, yeah, the other. Cleaning up for you. It is there's, spotless. There's not, there's not even a, there's not even a blemish on here. <gasps> it's amazing. It's got one hell of a storage in here. Whoa! It's got electric seat. I don't don't think it's got electric seat on that side, does it? Well, that's it. No, I'm not. No. We, no. we can't buy it then. Okay, it's <laughs> full of fluid. Um, like I said, the rad was flushed out. Uh, and uh, so once the purchase was done and we finished all the paperwork and whatnot, which is a little bit tricky when you live in Ontario and you're buying a vehicle in British Columbia, there's a bunch yeah, of different steps. We that weren't really 100% sure how that was going to work. We did try and make some phone calls ahead of time. and um, Nobody really knew. Nobody really knew. No. They're like, oh yeah, you can buy a trip permit in British Columbia, but you can only use it in British Columbia. And, I, and we're like, well, that's not or good. They're like, that doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, so there was like, there was conflicting information, right? So I think it's the same thing in the United States as it is in Canada, but you can travel state to state in, in the United States, I believe, on your insurance. Yeah. Like if, if you're from Texas and you want to go to Idaho or whatever, you can, right? But like the same thing in Canada. If you're in Ontario and you want to go out to BC for a holiday, you can. Your insurance covers you across, right? And so, but in this case, we were buying a temporary, which gives you 14 days. 10 days well it's between 10 and 10 14, and 14 depending days depending on how much you pay right. so we went we went 14 days um just to be safe because we didn't yeah. know if, if we had a mechanical breakdown along the way you know we might be held up so we figured exactly. well we'll take the longest one because we can't extend it after you know if we have an issue along the way so we went with the 14 yeah, day we went 14 yeah. day and then but because most of the insurance companies are just used to doing these temporaries within their own province. They were like, oh, but, but then when you get to Alberta, you have to get one there. And then when you get to Saskatchewan, you have to get one there. Well, they're saying, yeah, you it know, could be and that like, they no. might pull you over in another <laughs> province and say you need to get one there. So it turns out that- And we're like, you know what? Yeah. We'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. So, so it turned out not yeah. to be the no, case. No. So then um, after that was all said and done, we moved the camper across the street <laughs> and uh, hooked it all up and Gord went through it um, just to make sure everything worked, you know, furnace and fridge and everything was working fine. And we unpacked our, our things into it and then just spent a couple of days with my family visiting before um, we hit the road back home. We left Kamloops not bright and early by any means with really no plan nope. other than we were heading east and uh i don't know we probably didn't get out of there till 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning or something we got stuck in costco <laughs> oh yeah we went grocery shopping, grocery shopping. And a little bit more visiting in the morning yeah. and yeah maybe it was closer to noon i don't know but we just started driving and we were gonna get where we got and that's exactly where we ended up <laughs> Yeah, we actually drove for about 600 kilometers actually once we left um, and um, we ended up going through a bunch of mountain passes. We went through a section of Glacier National Park and then another section called the Rogers Pass, which is notorious for snowstorms. Um, and through those, uh, we went through a number of snowsheds. And for those of you not familiar with what a snow shed is, it's not somewhere where you store snow. <laughs> it is actually a man-made concrete tunnel, large tunnel um, covering the highway um, in known avalanche areas. And what it does is it, um, if an avalanche should happen, it won't close the highway. It actually rides right over top of the highway and deflects it off, usually down into a large canyon or a ravine, um, protecting the highways and the travelers. And it does really reduce um, 
closure times on the highways should this happen. So we went through a number of those um, going through. And I think the, well, I don't know if it was the main goal. The main goal was to get to Ontario, but we were doing the secondary road thing. <clears throat> we didn't want to just get on the Trans-Canada Highway and go all the way home. We wanted to travel like we normally travel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So we chose to go that route, which was really, really cool. Um, and along the way, we saw amazing mountains and all kinds of wildlife, which, of course, caused us to stop and take some glamour pics of the truck and camper and hang out with some wildlife, some deer and uh, what do we see? Deer and elk and bighorn sheep and all kinds of cool things like that. Um, finally, after all of that, we arrived at our first stop of the night. Which we decided as we were getting <laughs> we were there pretty much like we normally do, right? When it's getting late in the day, yeah. you sort of just kind of start looking and yeah. Marianne found an eye overlander spot that people had stayed on a little roadside rest area yeah. and um, it was a nice little spot. It was really, really pretty. We pulled in and there's a little pond and snow-capped mountains and swans on the water and we're like, done, we'll stay here. Well, this is the view from our uh, eye overlander campsite. First night on the road. Not a bad little spot, just outside of Fort Steele. So from there, the next day we continued on uh, meandering our way through the rest of BC and entered into Alberta. Yeah, we. Uh, our goal was to get to Bow Island, which is just outside of um, Medicine Hat, Alberta, where my big brother lives and hang out with him for a little bit. So um, that was approximately about 400 kilometers um, from Fort Steele. Yeah, we came in through the Crow's Nest Pass and then mm. um, across uh, to Marion's brother's place. Good morning. Good morning. We spent our first night in the Bigfoot camper. We did. And uh, we're working out the, the new dance, getting around each other in a little bit of a smaller <laughs> space, but uh, we'll figure it out. And. Uh, we stopped, wait till the traffic goes by. We just stopped at a rest area around Fort Steele. Yeah, it? it's called uh, Campbell Myers Rest Area. It's uh, kind of more like a day park. Um, there's a um, bunch of toilets here. I think they're pit toilet, I'm not sure. Um, bunch of picnic tables, camp areas, lots of cars, hang on. It was actually really quiet last night. Yeah, it was but our, our battery died, so we moved <laughs> spots. But yeah, we're like 50 feet from this nice little lake. The ducks are a little noisy, but um, there's ducks and swans and mountains in the back. So not a bad spot to pull over for the night. Yeah, so like I was saying, the, uh, the um, Campbell Myers um, rest stop has pit toilets and picnic tables, a um, little lake, it's nice. There's about three spots that you could park a rig and they ask that you stay for um, a maximum of eight hours. So you can at least pull in at night and uh, catch a little bit of sleep and continue on your way. And we've been here for eight hours and five minutes, so we gotta hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> We're headed for Alberta. Uh, See you later. Bye. Along the way, um, we went through a little town called Frank. And Frank was completely, what's the word I want to use, decimated, 
obliterated back in 1903, April of 1903, um, when at four o'clock in the morning, the side of Turtle Mountain came down and 110 million tons of limestone came down the mountain, uh, taking out the coal mine, the rail lines, and the town. Um, it, it just absolutely massive. And because of the time that it hit, most of the people were sleeping and it came down only like it took a couple of minutes and it was, it was done. Um, it was known as the largest landslide in Canada. Um, and to date it is still the deadliest landslide. Um, at the base of Frank slide, as you drive through Frank, um, there's a, a interpretive center that's been built there and you can go in and you can learn about the slide itself and the history of the area. After a visit for a day or so um, in Alberta with Marianne's brother, we um, started heading east again, which another not so early start, I don't think. Maybe <laughs> I think it was around noon. noon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we uh, started heading on down the road and um, we were looking to, uh, to, you know, do the back road thing again, but we had to stop for some smoked meat first. Yeah. Because uh, they told us about a good smoked meat place just down the road in seven persons. And yeah, um, yeah we stopped and loaded up on some good smoked meat there. Yeah, just a teeny tiny little community. And uh, so, yeah, we went in and we chatted with, I don't know, I'm sure if he was the owner or the manager. Um, but he was like, yeah, have a look around. And um, so we did. We spent a lot of money and <laughs> got some yummy snacks. Got some good snacks for the road. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. When we were all done that, um, we hit the road again and we didn't make it far down the highway to our next stop, which, which is a medicine hat at the world's largest teepee. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to say this right. Summis, I think it's called the Summis teepee. Um, so it was originally constructed for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. And in 1991, they moved it to Medicine Hat. Um, and it was a tribute to the native culture. This teepee is absolutely massive. It's 160 feet across at its base and 215 feet high, which is about the equivalent of 20 stories. It is really, really cool. So after leaving Medicine Hat, we continued on. I think we were on Highway 1 there. I think we got back yeah. on the big highway yeah. and we didn't really want to be on the big highway. So I started looking for options to get off. And um, I think it was right after we crossed uh, out of Alberta into Saskatchewan, um, we turned south. We drove some Saskatchewan, Southern Saskatchewan rural roads. Yeah, where we turned off. Awesome. It turned into gravel and mud and uh, it was nice country, rolling hills and you know, people say Saskatchewan's pretty boring, but maybe it can be in some places, but it's pretty nice down there. It is so pretty. It, you know what, it's different. Like everywhere that you live. So like we live in the lake country, heavily forested, lots of water and rocks and, you know, it, there's lots of different things to see. If you're out in BC and parts of Alberta, you're, you know, snow-capped mountains and more water and it's very majestic and beautiful. And, and then you get into Saskatchewan and Manitoba, it's very flat. It can be very, very flat, but it is big, big sky and lots of farm fields. And depending on the time of the year that you go through there, um, the canola can be in bloom and, and uh, mustard, and that is like the brightest yellow you've ever seen with these massive blue skies and big white puffy clouds. It's just, it's really something to see. And it, but the, the landscape, yes, it's flat, but when you really look at it, it rolls. And it is just the prettiest. And, you know, such a contrast from what we're, we were used to. So 
Yeah, so we did a pretty long day. We did. I got We did, you know, these back roads through these little towns so here and there. And um, we got along to, what was it called? Red Coat Trail? Yeah, the Red yeah. Coat Trail, yeah. So we got on the Red Coat Trail. And uh, so that basically took us all the way east, you know, like a long ways. A we were long on that. way, yeah. I think it was most, In, mostly 13, Highway 13. Yes. Yeah, we kind of yeah. zigzagged. Like you kind of you you follow the cuts of the of the farmers' fields, kind of this trail, right? And um, yeah, we were on there a long time. Plus, you're not going very fast, and we stopped lots and did a bunch of drones and shots and whatnot. And yes, yeah, so we did about a 700 kilometer day there. We made it to Weyburn, Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah it was dark and late. Yeah, it was we getting it was getting dark, and um, yeah, we decided just to stay in a Walmart parking lot. Yeah, pretty simple. So then the next day. We hit the road again, left way. We actually got a relatively early start for a change. <laughs> Made our way from there. Yeah, and then we were kind of, you know, that, those southern routes that are off the main highway, they sort of end around Manitoba or in, near Winnipeg. Near Winnipeg. So yeah. the trajectory was kind of towards Winnipeg on these secondary roads, and we did end up getting onto the Trans Canada Highway near Winnipeg. But yeah, outside of it, we managed yeah, to skirt outside, all the way around skirted it. Under, yeah, the main highway kind of skirts under Winnipeg a little bit. Yeah. And um, then we were headed for Ontario. Yep. So, yeah, that was like Manitoba was kind of a bit of a blur. We didn't. Yeah, Manitoba really did. You know, we weren't in Manitoba that long, no. I don't think. You get through it relatively quick. And um, right at the edge of Manitoba, before you get in Ontario, there's the White Shell Park and there's yep. a Falcon Lake, a little town. And that's the last cheap gas before you get into Ontario. Yep. So, fueled up there and then on to Ontario. That's right, yeah. And uh, then, again, we didn't want to take Highway 1 across, so we veered off again. Yeah, we turned off of Highway 17, the Trans-Canada Highway, just past Kenora. And so we took Highway 71 south, past Lake of the Woods. Uh, Sioux Lookout. Yeah, down towards... Or Sioux Narrows, sorry. Sioux, Sioux Narrows. Sioux Narrows, yeah. Emo and um, down towards Fort Francis. Yeah, so the main- and by then it was getting late. It was late, yeah. So we, again, pulled out the phone, looked on iOverlander um, where we could stay, and we found this really pretty park. Um, yeah, it, it was like a town city park, like right on the water. Yeah. Pretty nice. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, Fort Francis is a border town with International Falls, so it's on the U.S. border. And um, so there's industrial traffic crossing there, and um, there's train track that crosses there. Oh, lots of train tracks. And so we're like, oh, there's trains that go like, like right by our campsite. But you can see there is like all these big houses and everything That's there. right in the middle of town. Yeah, yeah. so we, Gord's like, wow, like, they like, must well, not run all night. It can't run know? that often, I say. It's in the middle of town. <laughs> like, how often could it run? Quite a bit. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> and it honks its horn. Yeah, and every they honk time. Horn every time they go by. Yeah, so I guess people get used to it. I guess, yeah. So nice that, big fancy houses on the water yeah. and trains going by honking the horn all night all long. All night long. Yeah. So we went over 900 kilometers that day. It was a long day. It's a long day, but it was leisurely pace and yeah, we, yeah. we were not on it. We weren't on a schedule or anything, so it was a good day. So day five, day five of traveling, we left Fort Francis um, early. We did have an early morning um, because we were meeting friends of ours in Thunder Bay. Yeah, I messaged some friends um, the night before maybe or something. I think so. Yeah, that's planning ahead. <laughs> and um, said, hey, we're going to be going through Thunder Bay. Oh, actually, we were going to stop and visit a friend in Atacokan. And I messaged him and said, we were going to go visit him in Atacoke. And he says, well, I'm in Thunder Bay for the day. And so then it turned out meeting up with a couple people in Thunder Bay. Yeah. That's how that worked out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it worked out really well, actually. We were there for like brunch and um, we met up and had uh, had kind of a brunch meal with, all, with these guys. And uh, it was good. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah, it was great to see them all. 
So then once our bellies were full, we hit the road again for the last stretch home, uh, just another 500 and some kilometers from Thunder Bay home. Uh, in total that day, we did just over 800 kilometers to get Over 800 kilometers in Ontario. And we and are just already in well in Ontario. Yeah, <laughs> we put on the kilometers in Ontario. We live about pretty much the middle of Ontario and it takes us 12 hours in either direction pretty much to get out yeah yeah whether we're going yeah, we're like you know 1200 kilometers in either direction to get out of ontario yeah uh, so it's a long way. we that night we uh finally made our way home all in we traveled probably close to 4,000 kilometers in the truck oh yeah somewhere around there yeah in five days so that's yeah not super long days, but it's gone. Yeah. Well, and then once we were home a couple days later, we had to drive back to Sault Ste. Marie to pick up my forerunner. Oh, that's right. That yeah. we left at the airport. We left her vehicle at the airport. So and it was another two and a half hours there, another two and a half hours back. <laughs> so another 500 kilometers to get her vehicle uh, from the airport storage lot. Oh, that thing's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got it. It's all said and done. Um, so yeah, so if you want to learn more about our journey to getting this whole truck camper, check out our Big Changes video where we tell you a lot more about it. We kind of recap our winter trip, uh, how we came to wanting this truck camper, the different options we had considered along the way from doing van life to class A to truck camper, uh, all of it. And then what our plans are because we don't stay with the truck. But I'm gonna make you watch that video to find out exactly what it is that we do. Um, but yeah, so, and this video now is going to be the start of the renovation series. So the truck that we've chosen as well as the camper kind of get some really cool upgrades. So follow along for that. And we have big plans. We do. We don't leave things as they are so. by any means. Um, lots of changes, lots of work, lots of videos. Yeah. And um, yeah, give us a like on that um, big changes video and go and watch that. Please give us a like on this video if you like what you're watching. And um, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Um, if you really like it, share it up with your friends. We'd really appreciate that as well. And uh, check us out on our Patreon page if you're interested in some current content and some behind the scenes content. Some more information over there. So go have a look at Patreon also. Yeah. So for now, Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you during our renovation series and maybe a couple of uh, cool little episodes of what we do here in Northern Ontario. Until next time. Bye. Bye for now.